A team of interpreters is a close-knit team. As an interpreter needs to be able to listen to another booth if no one in his or her booth understands a given language. He has to listen to this other booth and interpret on relay. That means that instead of interpreting what the speaker says directly, he interprets from an interpretation of that speech. Each speaker who takes the floor here will speak in just one language at a time, and that language, you have to understand, will go straight into the interpreting booths and from there will create a sort of network. Try to imagine a sort of virtual spider's web, invisible but reassuring, because straight away it will transmit the message through the interpreters to the other members who will understand it in their own language. In fact, every time someone takes the floor, this sparks off something like an electric charge running through the web in such a way that the message comes back to those who are listening. The new members of the European Parliament are mostly experienced politicians. But they tend to have experience of national parliaments, which are very different from the European Parliament in that they use one language. Here, in order to be understood, you have to make use of interpreters. And that demands a certain amount of a different discipline. People need to know that interpreting is not oral translation and a written speech is very difficult to interpret. Talking freely is better than reading, but if you have to read, make sure the interpreters have the text. A written speech can be translated in writing because it's a speech which is much denser in its concepts and ideas, whereas an interpreter is capable of interpreting thoughts expressed freely. Members who have a four-minute speech which they aim to give in one or two minutes of speaking time tend to read at a very high speed. The interpreter, therefore, is faced with a very difficult choice. Either he or she stops interpreting, or they send a message of distress to the president of the session. The interpreters can't keep up with you at that speed, so it's up to you. Either you slow down or you don't get interpreted. Interpretation is about communication, and part of communication is language, of course, is words, but there's also gestures and there are expressions, and that's why it's important for us to be able to see the speaker as well as seeing the reaction that he produces in his audience. If the French are all laughing, I want my listeners to be laughing. If they're all frowning, I want my listeners frowning. And that's why it's so important that the interpreters can see what's happening in the room. I would like to remind the members that when they speak in their mother tongue, their message will get through much more effectively than if they try to express themselves in a foreign language, because we are here for that, to help convey the nuances, emotions, feelings and intentions. The English that people speak in meetings, particularly when it's not their mother tongue, is a bastardized English, it's globalized English. Given that language is just a way to package thoughts, it's language which should be made to fit the content and not the other way around. If you use a language which you don't fully master, you tend to shape your thoughts to fit what you can say and not what you really want to say. The interpreter is somebody who's trained to work in a monstrous way, if you like. He's somebody who's hearing something in one language and at the same time is metabolizing it in his head and out of his mouth the same thing comes in another language and that is not normal. Let me make a comparison with flamenco. They say that to dance the flamenco well, you must have really lived life. 
An interpreter has to have had some experiences. They need an encyclopedic knowledge and an open mind. An interpreter can't afford to say, well, that's something which really doesn't interest me. More than a linguist, the interpreter is a communicator, and the job is all about getting a message across. An interpreter is not a walking dictionary, despite what people think. What people want from me is to give back the voice of somebody else, a prime minister, a trade unionist, a Nobel Prize winner who comes to talk to parliament. And the interpreter has to have a broad enough range to be able to play on all of these different registers and putting all these different voices over. That actually is my favourite part of the job, is getting inside a speech and almost getting inside a speaker's head and understanding their message and their emotion and their intention, I find really challenging and really exciting. And when it's working, it's such a kick to know that you're, you're understanding this person's way of thinking. And there are people whose head, quite frankly, you might not want to be in, but you have to do that as well. And that's another interesting part of the job. Le plus grand problème de l'interprétation. The biggest problem with interpreting today is the lack of qualified conference interpreters. It's a very challenging profession, and so only a very small percentage of people succeed in it. And what's happened in the UK at the moment is that languages, modern foreign languages, are not compulsory in schools after the age of 14. And we've seen a very drastic drop off in the number of students, of young people actually learning languages. And that is now starting to feed through into our recruitment, meaning that we're now starting to have quite serious difficulties in finding English mother tongue interpreters who've got a knowledge of two or more foreign languages. There is a lack of what we call the new languages, the languages which were not initially thought of as international languages, but which have become international through their country's accession to the European Union. Soon there will be a new type of scarcity, and that will be of the old languages. So a lot of our more senior interpreters are starting to think about retirement. So in the next five to seven years, we will lose probably a third of our interpreters and we won't be able to recruit that many new ones because they're, not, they're just not coming through. The future always is a challenge. Uh, we are already working in 23 languages, but what will be in increasingly a challenge is that we need interpreters who can master not only one or two additional languages, but maybe even more. And that's something which can only be acquired over time. And unfortunately, in some member countries, language education has been very much neglected because they believe that in their own language they could uh, do all over the world. That's not the case. We will invest into that. We are cooperating with the universities. We try to stimulate young people. And I can only say this is a fascinating place to work. So if your dream is to work one day in the European Parliament as an interpreter, learn languages, you have all the possibilities to arrive here at a wonderful workplace. It's one of the rare professions where there are still an enormous number of opportunities. It's a very interesting profession because today's history is not being written on the battlefields like in the past, but instead is being written in the large meeting rooms of the European institutions, where you will rub shoulders with the greatest figures in international politics, in fact, the greatest figures in any field. La Comisión de Presupuestos, por unanimidad, consideró que el importe de referencia que figura en dicha propuesta legislativa es compatible